Good morning, guys. It is 5 a.m. I am going to 5.30 a.m. spin class. And the reason why I've been doing this is because I have a photo shoot on Saturday. I definitely want to feel a little bit leaner for that. And this isn't necessarily for me to like shed some crazy weight, you know, last minute or go on a crazy diet. I just simply don't want to be as bloated right now because lately I've just been feeling so bloated and I'm not too sure why. I think it's something I'm eating. So I need to try to figure out how to cut something out of my diet. So I figured today I'd take you around, show you my day and go over some tips that I have to help you not bloat as much. I know that a lot of people struggle with this. I'm just gonna give you a little tips and tricks along the way. And I know I feel rough right now. My voice is so rough. I'm like still getting over a cold and I've had this cold for four weeks. I don't know what's wrong with me. I'm a struggle, struggle right now. I've also been going to this 5 a.m. class every single day. And you know what I really learned this week is that you're the only one that can really motivate yourself because I have friends that I'm like, hey, join the spin class with me. But at the end of the day, none of them want to. And I'm the only one showing up and like, I just meet new people in the spin class and chat with them and I have a blast like dancing my heart out on the bike. But you really realize like you're the only one that can motivate yourself when it comes to your body. Stop relying on other people. I think it's awesome to go to the gym with a buddy. Like I love going to the gym with my friends or Michael and like being encouraging for each other. At the end of the day, it's gonna be my body that I have to take care of. It's gonna be my photo shoot. I'm gonna be the one in charge of eating, all that kind of stuff. Anyways, one of my tips to help de blow is girl, boy, sweat it out. AKA why I'm going to spin class. Because I'm trying to sweat out all these toxins of whatever I'm eating that's upsetting my stomach. And I kid you not, once I sweat it out, I can notice myself a little bit less bloated. Let's get into the spin class. It's gonna be a good time and I will see you after when I'm all sweaty. I am so sweaty, it's unreal. 45 minutes and I basically burned about like 450 calories and that was all fasted cardio. And I feel so much better. Now let's go home. So every morning, Michael and I take our greens, omega-3s, and then these mushroom immunity pills, and all of those help reduce inflammation, kind of gets our body on track for the day, and then I also take apple cider vinegar, but I don't have that right now, but I usually take like two tablespoons and dilute it with water, and that helps with gut health. Usually a probiotic as well, uh, PE Science has one that I usually take, but that also helps with gut health. Got our Kofi B from Phil's Coffee. It only takes like 20 minutes for them to brew. All right, so I am making breakfast. It is 10.30. I'm going to cook this up, and then I'm also poaching some eggs, but I'm failing at it because I'm not paying attention. And that's going to be our protein bowl for Rookie Fist. So I will link what I eat for breakfast down below in the description box. But what I'm having is a morning protein bowl and honestly it works for dinner as well. But I did three poached eggs just because I did that cardio this morning. So I'm adding more protein. I did some salsa, some everything bagel seasoning. Your girl's a fan. Tomato, avocado, arugula, chickpeas, and then the chicken sausage. And that's pretty much what I have every morning. It looks really large, and it sure is, because when you intermittent fast, you gotta eat. So before I actually dive into breakfast, I wanted to bring up a point that really helps with bloating, which is to eat slow. And I know, duh, but so many people eat fast 
I eat super fast, but I have to remind myself to eat slow. So when you eat really fast, you are swallowing a ton of air, which is going to create gas buildup in your stomach. So just be aware of that, especially if you're feeling bloated or you just want to prevent it, just eat a little slow. So Michael and I are on one of our walks for the day, trying to fit you in. There we go, he's too tall. We usually walk like six times a day, not only for Bentley, but for our sanity as well. And this is always great when you're trying to de bloat, is get active. Walking continuously throughout the day, especially if you have an office job, is great because you're gonna get active and you're actually gonna get everything moving in your body. Yeah. Take lots of walks, people. So it is now noon and Michael and I are going to do our daily workout. Taking some prolific. He takes creatine and we also take high volume and BCAs. There you go. Pretty embarrassing. How about that one? Are you PE science, bro? I'm PE science, bro. <laughs> Okay guys, ignore the thumb head. I am now going to get into my workout and I'm doing a leg day and I already did all that cardio with biking but sometimes I add in a bit of extra hit. Uh, that's mostly because I have that photo shoot coming up. So I'm really trying to lean out. But I wanted to include one of my tips which is to always be stretching and also try out some yoga poses near the end of your workout and I'll film that just to show you what kind of poses I do. So when you do those yoga poses at the end, that could be when you're stretching anytime or even take a yoga class, you know, twice a week or something like that. I always try to do yoga poses though at the end of my workout every single day and it takes me like five minutes. But basically these muscles are going to release that excess gas your abdominal may be having, which may be why you're causing the bloat. So maybe look up a few different exercises. I'll link them down below, but I'll also show Show you some that are known to help you when it comes to your abdominal and stretching those muscles out. Cool, well I'm gonna get into the workout. Taking the stairs. Hey. <laughs> I feel like that's all that I do. But so now that I'm done working out, I usually take my BCAs. Some people say take it during the workout. I take my BCAs after my workout just because I don't like the taste of flavored water while I'm trying to get a pump in. So I'm gonna go home, shower take the BCAs, and then I'm probably gonna make Michael and I some acai. I don't count my macros or anything like that. Like, I just try to eat as clean as I can with an occasional few treats. But if you are feeling really bloated lately, I would strongly suggest keeping a food diary. I have this weird intolerance to milk. So when I first discovered that, I started recording whenever I started feeling bloated or my stomach was upsetting me, and it led to all the times that I was actually consuming milk. So if you may have like an inkling or a hinge 
Are those even words? I don't know. If you have a feeling that something may be upsetting your stomach, like wheat or, I don't know, blueberries, I can't think of anything, but cut it out of your diet for a few weeks and see if your bloating goes away. Track a food diary. It's so helpful if you're just feeling funky all the time. That's not normal and you shouldn't feel that way. So check it out. And Ula, you have an acai bowl by yours truly. So now I'm answering some funnel emails for the day. I wanted to bring up another tip that helps with bloating and that is to not drink soda or carbonated things. So fizzy drinks tend to leave your stomach upset and a bit bubbly and it's going to create unnecessary air trapped in there. So just slowly try to wean off the soda. I strongly suggest that certain things in your diet like, you know, fizzy drinks, too much salt or sugar, or not eating enough fiber, that's also really important. That kind of stuff is definitely going to make you bloated and your stomach's gonna be so upset. So always work on fiber intake. Don't drink fizzy drinks. And if you do, make it an occasion. And then also watch your consumption of sugar and salt. Hey guys, so tonight we are making a burrito bowl inspired by Chipotle. And we got everything from Trader Joe's for the most part. We're gonna walk you through how to make this burrito bowl. Michael cooks, but I'm good at microwaving things. So let's get started. So this is the meat that we are using. And we literally just bought it from Trader Joe's. Polo Osado. And then we make fajitas, bell peppers, and red onion. And we have an avocado, some arugula, and then we have some romaine lettuce. And we're just gonna put that in our bowls. And then we have the topper, which is salsa. So we have black beans, and then I bake garbanzo beans, which is just chickpeas. And you usually put them in the oven for like 10 minutes, and then they're nice and crispy. And then we have the quinoa for the base of it. So this meal usually takes like 20, 30 minutes, depending if you poach eggs with it or however long your chicken takes, something like that. So we're gonna start right now and I'll let you know when it's finished. And that, my friends, is how you make a healthy Chipotle burrito bowl. Okay, so I filmed that entire vlog like a week ago and then I realized I don't have an ending for this. It's just like poof. So 
I wanted to wrap up this de-bloating blog and I hope these tips help you. Feel free to comment, like, subscribe to my channel. It really helps your girl out. Let me know any other videos you want me to do. Um, I love hearing your feedback and I'm having so much fun doing this. I truly am clueless with YouTube, so thanks for bear with, like, bear with, thanks for bearing with me, question mark. But I will see you in the next video, which will go over how my photo shoot actually went. Hey! All right, goodbye!